Thursday 4th Sex Week has arrived. Tune in later to find out what fun events are happening and what kind of prizes you can win. After numerous GOP representatives made an attempt at the speaker seat, the House now finally has one. Who it is and what was said in their first address. The Cavs got a taste of big city living last night as they opened their season in Brooklyn against the Nets. Did they come out on top? An unwanted overnight stay was what one man experienced early yesterday morning in Manhattan. Where did he stay and the rescue efforts first responders made? All these stories and more as your TV2 Flashcast starts right now. This is TV2 News. Good morning, Kent State and all of Portage County. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Anthony Zacharias. And I'm Michael Neenan. Well, to start, it's been a busy week here on the Kent State campus. Sex week is in full swing, Halloween is just right around the corner, and clubs are hosting fun activities. That's right, Anthony. There's always a lot to do on campus. Now turning towards campus news, let's see what our TV2 correspondent Eli Federspiel has for us. Hi, Eli. That's right, guys. In the midst of all these events on campus, we'll shift to some more serious news. A trial date has been set for the former Kent State student charged with two counts of first-degree felony rape. Since being postponed from its original date in August by the district court, the judge has now set the trial for November 14th. This date comes over a year after the former architecture student returned to a house party off Lincoln Street uninvited and allegedly committed both crimes. A new on-campus club as of spring 2022 has been promoting environmentalism in a fun way. Students for Environmental Change participates in events such as hikes in the warmer seasons and plastic water bottle cap drives in the colder seasons. As they gain more consistent members, they hope to show people that it is worth the large turnout. In November, they plan on watching the Lorax while painting tote bags. Condoms on the K, sex bingo, and the annual ballroom drag show. After a week of fun, sex week is wrapping up tomorrow. Later today, an asexual, aromantic roundtable discussion is being hosted in the LGBTQ Plus Center, and Sex in the Dark, an anonymous Q&A with sexperts to answer any of your honest or outrageous questions, will be held in the Cartwright Auditorium. And don't miss Sex Week's final event, Sextoberfest, in the ballroom tomorrow at 7 p.m. That's all I have for you right now. Check out KentWire.com for upcoming events and updating stories. I'm Eli Fetterspiel. Back to you, Anthony and Michael. Thank you so much, Eli. All right, now it's about time we tune in to the weather for your two Thursday morning forecast. Currently in Kent, it is 64 degrees. It feels like 63, though. Okay, little one degree difference with a dew point of 49 degrees with wind traveling northeast at around four miles an hour. Humidity is at 68% and I'm happy to report that the visibility is at a full 10 miles. Now as we move on to the seven day forecast uh, today, it's going to be around 73 with a low of 61. It will be fairly cloudy and then tomorrow on Friday it'll be 76 with a low of 59. Uh, you will see some sun, but that is unfortunately as good as it gets because over the weekend it will be fairly rainy, uh, including on Halloween weekend. That is unfortunate, but uh, thankfully, hopefully you are indoors for that because on the real Halloween Tuesday, it will only be partly cloudy, though it will get into the 40s on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Speaking of Wednesday, uh, there may be some snow in the morning. Yeah, some fall snow. You don't see that very often. Nah, just kidding. That happens all the time here in Northeast Ohio. Thank the lake effect. But uh, that's all the weather we have for now. Be sure to tune in to, uh, later for more weather updates. And check KentWire.com for any major weather updates. Let's get back to the news. Four teenagers were involved in a car crash in Granger Wednesday night. 
Medina County sheriffs say they were alerted by the iPhone's emergency alert system seconds after the crash and rushed to the scene. The three passengers were able to exit the vehicle after the impact, but the driver is considered to be in critical condition as of Wednesday night. We are now two months into the UAW strike and the ripple effects continue. Locally in Parma, 139 General Motor workers were laid off from the Parma Metal Center. On the national level, the strikes expand west into Texas. In the Lone Star State, approximately 5,000 GM workers walked off their plant. Both sides at the bargaining table are not in agreement as GM's CEO does not want to sign a contract that will jeopardize the company's future. And when we come back, the Cleveland Cavaliers are back in action on the court, but with a new member on the ownership team. Stick around to see who has stake now. The latest game featuring your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man has released and fans rush to get a copy. All this and more when we return. After three weeks with no Speaker of the House, members of the U.S. House of Representatives finally have one. Louisiana Representative Mike Johnson met the 217th threshold that gave him the gavel. Shortly after being named Speaker, Johnson addressed his colleagues as the chamber gets set to work again. Directing towards the country's adversaries, he said, quote, the people's house is back in business. Congress has passed a bipartisan resolution to send aid to Israel in the conflict with Hamas, with a 97% voting in favor of the action, the largest majority in modern history. This comes after Louisiana Representative Mike Johnson was elected as Speaker of the House, allowing Congress to vote on legislation once again. Former President Donald Trump testified in a New York court yesterday where a judge slapped him with a $10,000 fine for breaking a gag order. The judge said the former president discussed courtroom employees with reporters prior to entering court. After taking the stand, Trump stormed out of the courtroom when the judge denied his attorney's request for a direct verdict which looked to dismiss the case. Later on, Trump re-entered the courtroom to discuss matters with the judge. And now, your TV2 Sports Report. Outside of the basketball court, the Cavaliers got some exciting news with a new member to the ownership team. Cleveland Browns defensive end Miles Garrett now holds minority stake in the team. Garrett will also serve as the official Cavaliers brand sponsor. All of this unfolds as the team made, played their first regular season game last night against the Brooklyn Nets. Well, that's right, and quite a close game between the two with Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland not skipping a beat, along with some new faces on the court contributing last night. To tell us more about the Cavs and more in the world of sports, we have TV2 sports correspondent Ryan Shanko. Hey, Ryan. Hey, guys. Well, I think it's a good thing that Miles Garrett is now a minority owner of the Cavs because, to me, that means he's in Cleveland to stay. And if you're a Cleveland sports fan, that means everything. So good morning everyone. My name is Ryan Shanko and today I'll be your guide around the wide world of sports. Speaking of which, the NBA is back and so are the Cleveland Cavaliers who were in Brooklyn last night to open their season. We're gonna head out to the Barclays Center, Miles, Bridges and the Nets looking to start their year off with a win against Donovan Mitchell and the Cleveland Cavaliers. We start this one late in the third, Cam, Thomas. He can get a bucket anytime, anywhere. Cam Thomas, he had 36 points last night. Now here, we're late in the fourth under a minute. Donovan Mitchell with the theft and the flush. He ties the game at 111. Now the Cavs are down two in crunch time. Spida has the ball, of course, and he tells Cam Johnson, gooseneck young fella, as he puts the Cavs on the high side. Cam Thomas, like I said before, he had been everything for the Nets in this one, but he cannot put it home here as the Nets fall 114 to 113 and the Cavs open their season with a one point road win. And since the NBA is back, that means college hoops are right around the corner. Speaking of, if you want to preview the men's and women's basketball teams, then you're in luck this Sunday. 
The Mac Center is hosting Mac O' Lantern Madness, a two-hour event that will give attendees an opportunity to be the first to watch our basketball teams this year, all with a spooky twist. Fans are encouraged to wear costumes and all kids in attendance will receive a free candy bucket so that they can trick-or-treat around the Mac at stations hosted by Kent State Athletics. Don't worry, there are freebies for students too, as the first 175 will receive a really cool Skella Flash t-shirt. Thank you guys for watching on this beautiful Thursday morning. Remember, sports never stop and neither do we. I've been Ryan Shanko for TV2 Sports. Thank you, Ryan. Well, it's not your typical place to get a good night's rest, but one man was stuck in a Manhattan bank vault overnight and freed early Wednesday morning. The vault finally opened on its automatic timer after the man was trapped for over nine hours. First responders were present throughout the night trying to cut through the thick vault door, but could not make progress once they hit metal plating. Once freed, the man was treated by EMS and later released with no injuries. Spider-Man 2 for PS5 became the fastest selling first party title over a 24 hour period. The game was released on Friday selling 2.5 million units in one day. This beats out the previous record holder God of War Ragnarok, also a PlayStation exclusive. The game is a sequel to Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales and features both Peter Parker and Miles Morales as playable characters. Well, that's, that looks like a pretty cool video game. Haven't played it yet, but some Spider-Man and pizza time. What do you guys think? I mean, I really can't wait. I still haven't even played the first two, so I mean, I'm really, I'm really excited to really get my hands on that game. Yeah. I mean, I've heard from uh, one of our camera operators that it's pretty awesome. I know we already yeah. finished the game. Wow. So <laughs> well, be pretty good. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us. For updates on all of these stories and more, visit our website at KentWired.com. And be sure to follow us on all social media platforms at KentWired. I'm Ryan Shanko. I'm Eli Fetterspiel. I'm Michael Neenan. And I've been Anthony Zacharias. Have a great day, Portage County.